let's go over to David. Um, go, so, David. <laughs> um, let me introduce Ooh. David. So, David Neal is the Reverend Geek. I just love that handle. That's totally brilliant. Uh, is an accomplished illustrator, software developer, international speaker, and professional funny guy. And uh, you thought you came here for developer relations, but you actually came here for the illustrated book of Dad Jokes, which is just published. Um, and I know it's on my uh, Christmas present list for my 10-year-old because he loves that sort of thing. Um, David is joining us from North Georgia in the US. So thank you very much, David, for taking the time to talk to us about developer relations. Um, so we're all sitting here at our wonderful, comfortable desks. Um, on his, if you look at his website, there is a ton of testimonials. Um, but the TLDR is, this is a cool dude. Uh, check out his site for more technical work. Uh, tonight, however, he is bringing the illustrations and the communication tips. David, uh, so glad to have you here. Please take it away. Thank you so much, Richard. I am so glad to be with all of you today, sharing one of my favorite topics, and that is the art of visual storytelling. I believe that if, if you don't get anything else from this talk, that whatever skill that you want to learn, that you, you, you see someone else doing and think, man, that would be so much fun. I wish I could do that. I'm here to tell you that you can do it. If I can do, uh, if I can learn the skill of illustrations and drawing, uh, having no background in that whatsoever, I I think you can too. So I'm going to start off by, of course, telling you a little bit about my story. And in 2011, I finally got up the courage to give my first talk. And oh my goodness, it was <laughs> it was nerve wracking. It was awful. I I made every classic mistake. My I had demo failures, and um, you know, it was just a real struggle. But I came away thinking, you know, I survived, and it wasn't that bad. And I had so many people come up to me and and give me encouragement, like. Um, you know, you did a good job or you, you know, thanks for, for teaching me something. And I knew that I was the worst speaker in speaker history, but I saw, you know, a glimmer of hope that maybe if I practice a little bit more, I could get better at this thing. So over the next few years, I gave lots and lots of talks. I, from 2011 to 2014, I spoke at meetups and conferences, and I got a, a DevRel job in 2013. I spoke at my first international conference, and I probably gave over 100 talks over a span of three years, and I got better as a speaker. And, you know, things were, weren't so bad. I still felt like I was going to you know, die every time I got on stage or in front of a camera or whatever. But I, you know, I had this a little bit of confidence that, you know, I survived last time. I'll probably survive this time. But over those years, my audience was eh, maybe not always that engaged. I, I got good feedback. People thought I was a good speaker, but I really just felt like I wasn't having the impact that I wanted to have on my audience. I wasn't really inspiring people. I wasn't getting the kind of feedback that I was longing for, that, you know, something that I had shared was making a difference, that was changing people's perspectives or encouraging them to try, you know, some technology or something new that I was talking about. Maybe you can relate. Maybe you've had some of those kind of, eh, uh, you know, it was okay moments. So at the end of 2014, I was feeling burned out. I was thinking, is this the best I can do? Is this the best I can hope for? 
And I remember sitting down with the owner of my company that I worked, I was a developer advocate and I, I was telling him these, my thoughts on this thinking, I'm, I, you know, I may just take the, a year off. Like, I, I don't know. I don't know if what I'm doing is really helping or not. I, I'm just not doing what I, you know, making the impact that I feel like I should have. I was having a bit of a existential crisis as a software developer turned speaker. So as one does when you're experiencing an existential crisis, I was uh, searching YouTube for inspiration, trying to find, you know, find the right book, find the right recipe, find the right uh, hints on how to be a better speaker, how to be a more effective speaker. And I came across a video that has changed my life. And that was a video by Dan Rome that he did at Google on the topic of show and tell, which is a book that he's written on how to give extraordinary presentations. And in this video and in the book, which I highly recommend, um, he makes the case that you don't have to be an artist. If you can draw lines and shapes and arrows, boxes, you know, just add some flavor to your slides, you can make a huge impact on the message that you're delivering and on your audience. I was so impressed with the video. I watched it several times and I thought, this may be it. I, this looks like it would be a lot of fun to do and I'm going to try this. So I had a brand new talk that I needed to give for the Orlando Code Camp in Florida. And it was on the topic of using Kanban as a way to visualize your work. And, I, and it was kind of like, well, that makes sense. I'm, I'm going to present a topic on visualizing work what better way to, or opportunity to create some, my own visuals. Like I know I can't find clip art or animated gifs or anything that's going to relate to, you know, actually doing Kanban. So this, this totally makes sense. I had at this time a, an old iPad, a cheap $5 stylus and I downloaded a couple of drawing apps from the app store and I thought, I'm, I'm going to try this. I'm going to try to, you know, maybe, maybe five slides or maybe just, you know, a little something here and there that would uh, add some flavor uh, to the talks, to, to this talk. So here, here are some examples. This is what I was able to do with this, with this iPad and, and stylus and the app. I <laughs> drew out some text. You know, uh, I, I discovered that my handwriting was terrible. Um, and pardon me, when I look at some of these, these images that I, I created, I, I cringe, but it was, it was part of the charm of giving this talk was just how bad some of these illustrations were. I drew uh, a couple of people talking about work uh, around a Kanban board. And uh, I, I can't tell you how long it took for me to, to draw this and to make it look even usable. Like <laughs> it was, I put a lot of effort into it, but I discovered along the way that this was so much fun that I enjoyed creating uh, illustrations to uh, describe this process. I even thought, man, I, I have the opportunity. I could throw in some humor. Like, you know, I can, I've always wanted to be able to deliver and be entertaining, be uh, to add some humor to my talks. Here's an opportunity. I can create, um, how you know, <laughs> some silly stuff. Within the first 10 seconds, 30 seconds, of giving this first talk where I created illustrations, I knew 
this was a game changer. The audience looked completely different from any other audience that I had ever presented to. They were like so engaged. They were smiling, laughing at my jokes, which hardly ever happened before. And, uh, you know, I had so much engagement from folks asking questions and all kinds of things. Like it was just a night and day difference from all the other talks that I'd given up to that point. And an another amazing thing happened. Um, I discovered that I had no trouble at all delivering the talk that I wanted to give. And, you know, it occurred to me, I didn't realize this until later, that, you know, when you're in school and you take notes during class and you might write down a word or two or a phrase, and then some days or weeks later, you go back and you look at your notes and you can remember more than just the word or the phrase that's on the page. You remember all the stuff that the teacher was talking about around that particular key word. There's something about the physical act of taking notes that helps you to remember. And that's what I discovered when I gave my first talk with these hand-drawn illustrations is that as I was drawing each slide, I was thinking about all the things that I wanted to talk about with that slide. And when when I gave the talk and that slide would come up on the screen, I had no trouble at all uh, remembering a lot of the stuff that I wanted to say and to say it more naturally, you know, telling a story, telling my story, how how all of this was was done. Later that day, or at the end of that day, at the Orlando Code Camp in 2015, I saw a man running across the parking lot. And I thought, well, that's strange. You know, don't see, you know, you don't see somebody running <laughs> from a conference. Um, and then I realized that, the, hey, he's running at me. Well, he came up to me, uh, ran up to me and says, hey, I wanted you to know that your talk was the best talk that I went to today. And uh, did you do those drawings? Did you, you know, how are you able to do this? You know, tell me, you know, I want to be able to do this kind of thing too. And ever since, as I've given more and more talks with hand-drawn illustrations, I've had similar experiences, similar stories where people, you know, gave me such amazing feedback. I didn't magically become a better speaker or presenter. I owe it all to the visuals and how those visuals empower me to tell my story the way that I want to. I can have far greater impact on my audience because I can tell my story. I can remember more of what I want to say. I can be more comfortable. My slides are engaging. And at the same time, I am more engaging because I'm more comfortable and, and natural. Now, public speaking was my introduction to creating these hand-drawn illustrations, but that's not the only thing you can do with visuals and, uh, you, and use them in communication. You can use them to write blog posts and tutorials. You can help them to use them to improve documentation, make them more entertaining and engaging. You can use them in the videos that you create or the webinars that you put on. Uh, you can certainly add them to open source projects in the form of readmes and documentation. And you can use them to engage your audiences on social media. I have since I've started doing hand-drawn illustrations. I've, I've used them in all these areas. E every facet of content creation in developer relations. And I have found that it just dramatically makes a huge impact on every facet of communication. To give you one example, uh, I worked at Okta for a few years and 
one of the most successful pieces of content that uh, any of us created or worked on was I uh, worked on this illustrated guide to OAuth and OpenID Connect. You know, taking something that was a difficult concept, uh, terminologies, and you know, ha mapping uh, known, you know, well-known uh, software things to how do you apply that to OAuth and OpenID Connect? I've had people come up to me at conferences um, years later to say, hey, your video on OAuth and OpenID Connect helped me to understand uh, what all that stuff was about. And it's such a an amazing uh, honor to have been able to give someone that gift of of learning and, and uh, actually enjoying <laughs> learning, right? So humans have been uh, doing illustrations and storytelling through visuals since pretty much the dawn of illustrations. And did you know that uh, our brains are, are just so tuned to processing visual information? There's Somewhere between 40 and 50% of the neurons connected to our brain are, de are dedicated to our eyes. About 90% of our brain's processing power is uh, focused on visual processing visual information. And studies show that our brains can process images and graphics and, and those kinds of things about 60,000 times faster than we can text. Uh, you've, you've probably heard the phrase that a picture is worth a thousand words. Well, that's scientifically true. That's a, Our brains can process a photo or a picture or an illustration so much faster and we can get so much more context and information uh, than we can just reading something. Arthur Doler, uh, has an excellent talk on how our brains learn. And when a person sees something new, something that they've never seen before, it's it's like brain candy. So your hand-drawn illustrations can be like that <laughs> amazing kind of feast for the eyes that people will just love to see. Illustrations can help you communicate faster can help you to remember and help your audience remember you and your message longer. It can help you to generate ideas together through collaboration. It can help make something really complex like that OAuth and OpenID Connect uh, topics uh, more simple and easier to understand. It allows you to be more creative. And most of all, it can have fun. I mean, who who wants to sit through a boring talk or read some boring documentation? You know, use illustrations to make something engaging and fun. You can show relationships and make complex things clear and easy to understand. You can make data more interesting, and it can become a superpower to make you more persuasive. You can um, add humor to something that's typically dry and boring describing a process you can say i have this idea and i create you know wrote this idea down and i shared it with some other people who gave me feedback which caused me to just chunk that idea into the garbage because it's trash and let's start all, all over again so you may think that you can't draw and you can't do these things but as i mentioned before if you can draw shapes, lines, arrows, blobs, letters, and numbers, you can draw just about anything. You just may not realize it yet. You can draw stick figures, which are so expressive, and you can put them on all kinds of scenarios and describe, uh, you know, it, it allows the audience to picture themselves in your story. You can use shapes to compose something that you may not even think you can draw, like a city landscape or a bicycle. Now, is this the most realistic bicycle you've ever seen? 
No, but you recognized it when you saw it, right? So it, it doesn't have to be art. Anything that you create will be super engaging and your audience will love it. Actually, the the worse your artistic ability is, is actually the more entertaining it will be. <laughs> if you can draw a blob, you can draw the most popular thing in programming right now, the cloud, or the second most popular thing, a pile of JavaScript. If you're still not convinced, I hope you are, but go and check out Show and Tell by Dan Rohn, get the book, watch the video, and I hope that you give this a try. Now, you may, you know, if you are convinced and you say, let's let's move on, let's, let's learn this thing, right? Well, I want to tell you that you can learn this skill. My three ingredients that I believe for learning any new skill, one, determination, two, practice, and three, a whole lot of patience. You, you're going to have to give yourself grace and a lot of patience because learning any new skill, whether it be a programming language, a new system, a new framework, it, it's all the same kind of process. You're going to be kind of terrible at it for a while. It's going to be frustrating. It's going to, but you're going to make some little wins. You'll have some success. And if you just keep practicing, I guarantee three months, six months, a year from now, you'll look back and say, wow, I can't believe how far I've come. Some quick tips uh, on just, you know, what I use and what I suggest people use. If you, you can use pen and paper and use like a scanner on your phone, that will work. Uh, you can use dry erase boards. So you can buy a lap size dry erase board and you can draw whatever you need. You can use different colors, scan that with your phone. And uh, yeah, one of the most of all the, you know, advancements in whiteboard technology, the dry erase board is the most remarkable. And then um, on the digital side of things, I recommend uh, a ninth or 10th generation iPad and the first generation Apple Pencil, which is what's supported on those, and an app called Tayasui Sketches Pro. The iPad will start you around $329. The pencil is about $99. The app is only $6. For about $450, you can have a really amazing setup. You can even save some money if you buy a refurbished uh, iPad, and that, those are uh, definitely good too. My personal setup, I have an iPad Pro, Apple Pencil, and I use a program called Procreate, which costs like $20, one-time lifetime updates. And, um, you know, I've got a lot of money invested in an iPad Pro and Apple Pencil, which uh, is totally unnecessary. Uh, if I were buying um, a new setup today, my iPad's about five years old now, I would get the iPad Air, um, which also supports the second generation Apple Pencil. For uh, if, if you are interested in Android or Windows tablets, uh, check out Brad Colbo. Uh, he's got his website and YouTube channel where he reviews hardware and apps. He's got some courses available on, uh, on his website for drawing and illustrations. For a more comprehensive set of drawing and illustration courses, check, check out 21 Draw. They've got a little bit of everything, but these are like illustration courses. They'll, they'll help you with some skills, but really you don't need very much skill <laughs> to do some of the things that, that I do for uh, presentations. So that's my story. I love getting to do uh, hand-drawn illustrations for all the content that I create. And I hope you're inspired to give this a try. Let me know if there's anything I can do to help you. And last but not least, I believe all of us in technology have an incredible opportunity 
to impact the people around us in our families, our workspaces, the community, and the world through the power of technology. So I, I encourage you to get out there, use your talents and skills to be awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much, David. That is <laughs> super, <laughs> super inspiring. I dabbled with that stuff a couple of years ago and gave up. Um, kind of, yeah, I need to go back and try again. Um, I had a, one of those iPad minis, but it just wasn't responsive mm -hmm. enough when you drew. So I think things have moved on. The, the, the tools are actually better. The iPad, the iPads. Yeah. Yeah, the devices have gotten a lot better. I've got an uh, an iPad Mini that is it's pretty much the the newer iPad Minis are like on par with the uh, the the older iPad Pro that I have now. Marvelous. Yeah, I need to go and get a new one because <laughs> my uh, my old one is is broken. Um, I'm going to ask a question just before I throw it open to the audience. Uh, so please post any questions in the chat. Um, one thing that really struck me when you were talking about remembering the content of your talk and then your slides mm -hmm. themselves is um, there's so little on them, right? There's, there's actually not much content at all. Yeah. Um, and I think there must be an inverse relationship between the amount of text or the amount of content you try to stuff onto the slide and the yeah. ability to remember what you were going to say, right? Yeah. It's that old, you know, that old programming thing, less is more, right? So ironically, would you agree, the, the fewer things you put on a slide, the easier it will be to remember what you wanted to say. <laughs> well, uh, it's easier to cover up if you forget some things, if there's less on the slide. Well, the slide is, is typically there to, uh, you know, just to highlight some things for the audience and, and to help you as a speaker remember things, right? It's like, it's your... It's almost like your speaker notes a lot of times if you're using bullet points. And when I was becoming a, a better speaker, trying to become a better speaker, I started to, I was in the camp of like, I was getting away from using bullet points on slides. I, I, there was a book that was published some time ago on death by PowerPoint. Uh, and I've used, I've heard people use that phrase. And it's like, I want to, I want my slides and things to be engaging for the audience. So I was using a lot of clip art and photos and trying to make it visually interesting uh, so that, yeah. And, you know, to your point, I was relying on like the notes that were in my PowerPoint to, to know, okay, since they're not on the screen, I need to, re you know, have some way of re remembering what I wanted to say about this slide. And when I started drawing, I discovered I did, I really didn't need that anymore. I could mm -hmm. I could comfortably talk about all the things that I wanted to talk about on each slide. 